Hey guys, welcome back to Troy's Garage. My name's Troy, this is my garage. Now we can get down to business. First task, this is an all wheel drive. I've gotta get all four tires up in the air so that I can turn the car on, put it in drive, and show you what the actual issue is. The part that we're after is right there in the center of the screen. There's a bearing inside of that. That is what's called the viscous coupler on Toyota Sienna and RAV4 all-wheel drive models. This is the rear drive line that leads into the rear differential. So what we do is we start by removing this black plate. There should be four, uh, I believe those are 14 millimeter bolts. And then we'll take off the drive line from the front of this as well. Those are 12 millimeter. And we'll get to that point and then we'll look at what it takes to get the viscous coupler itself removed from the front of the rear differential. Hey guys, it's future me coming at you. Uh, I'm actually editing this video right now. I wanted to point out that there's chapter links down below in the description so that you can kind of bounce around to the different sections of this. I realize that some people find this kind of stuff uh, pretty intimidating. This job on a scale of one to five as far as mechanical ability need to complete it is probably a two, two and a half. Uh, it's not horribly bad uh, as long as you have the proper tools. That's gonna be key. I'll leave a list down below of the tools that you need for this. There's also a little section of the video that talks about the tools, which is what I'm editing right now that gave me the idea of, hey, I should probably kind of give you a little clue about how hard this is and what tools you're gonna need. My niece got two different quotes from two different mechanic shops for this job. They were like $2,800 for one and $3,200 for another one. Um, this job took me uh, two different nights um, and probably about a total of five hours altogether. I'm not a mechanic by trade, so uh, if that's any indication of how this could go for you, as long as you have some basic mechanical skills, follow this video, you'll be able to be just fine. Having a press is key. Um, having some of the other tools that I mentioned in the video is also key. Let's get back to the video. All right, so I got the drive line off. I had to come forward and remove one of the carrier bearings as well to give me enough slack to pull that off. So you're gonna have to do that. That's a, a, a 14 as well to take those two bolts out and then it just kind of drops down. I still had to use a little pry bar to gain just that extra little like quarter inch of clearance to get that to clear the bolts. So it's a little bit tricky, but I believe in you, you can figure it out. So now getting the actual coupler off, uh, it's that front aluminum assembly. I can't get both my arms over my head at the same time. If I had a lift, I'd already have this part out, but there's basically four bolts. Uh, you can see two of them here on this side, one right there one right there same thing on the other side there's also that electrical connection there at the top so let's get all of those removed the bolts out uh, and the electrical connection disconnected it's going to probably leak some gear oil so i'm going to grab my uh, oil change bucket and stick it underneath this just to catch anything that falls out one more plug for troy's garage thanks for watching all right, this is the viscous coupler removed from the vehicle. Um, it sits in the car like that. That's up. This is that electrical connection I was talking about. You basically just squeeze that and it pulls out. I ended up having to squeeze that with a pair of angled needle nose pliers. And we'll talk about the tools you need for this job here in just a second. And this is just a vent tube. So it's just a rubber hose that pulls off the four bolts and the whole thing kind of comes out like that and it does leak gear oil. That caught me off guard. It came off easier than I thought and gear oil kind of got on the driveway before I could get the bucket underneath it. So anyway, be prepared for that. What we're looking for inside of this is this bearing right here. So buried in this thing is that bearing. Here's the part number for that, 90363-95007. It's a sealed bearing. You don't have to do any bearing packing or anything like that. So it just goes in. We gotta try to get this thing apart. Uh, I don't know exactly how to do this at this point, but I will explain it once I figure it out. So back in a few, Troy's garage. Oh, and I might add, the figuring things like this out, this is where you really save the money. Because I think this bearing was like $88, $86. Uh, 
ordered it on Amazon. It comes free shipping. But this thing, if you try to order just that whole component all built, is between $700 and $1,200, depending on where you find the part, if you can find it. So this is where you save the money, is figuring things like this out. So you're welcome, and if this video helps you, there is a super thanks down below. You can send me a little cash as a reward for teaching you how to do something like this yourself. Really do appreciate that. All right, let's figure out how to rip this thing open, and I'll show you step-by-step step and the tools that it takes to do it. So somebody's already been in this one. The gasket uh, material that's on this one is like orange. And then down inside there is a clear like silicone. So somebody's already been in this one once. My niece has owned this van for quite a while. Uh, I know that she hasn't been in there. But anyway, this is a pretty common failure on Toyota Sienna and RAV4 from what I've seen. So I'm going to disconnect. Actually, I'm going to try to press this out and leave the connector connected if I have enough slack to do that. Um, the other option is to remove these pins. You saw that I marked this one here and then I marked the pin down in there so I know which pin goes to which side so that if I do end up having to take it apart I just know which one goes where. I'm going to try to press this apart now. I've got my hydraulic press right over here. I've got to dig to it and get to it but that's what I'm up to now. So there's our bad part. Oh. Yeah, you can. That's the sound you're not supposed to hear. <laughs> it's supposed to sound like this. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. that got water down inside there and it's not supposed to have water in there. Now I just gotta figure out how to clean this up. That up. You can almost tell which way is up or down. Yeah, all the rest is down there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yep, uh, that's what we're doing. Fun stuff. Oh. All right. So what you just saw was, I'm I'm thinking that most often when this thing comes out, the bearing actually stays in this because usually you press a bearing into this and then that will slip in over the top. I don't know, but either way, uh, it did come out of this fairly easy. I did have to. Uh, use a screwdriver and a little baby sledgehammer. I had just enough of a lip to get a screwdriver on that and I would hit it, do a quarter turn, hit it, do a quarter turn. And luckily it just slowly worked its way off without too much difficulty. This is metal so you could weld to that. Build yourself a little lip out of uh, weld. Something that you know a chisel or a screwdriver or whatever could get a grip on. Um, this particular one has an o-ring too that the new one does not So you could actually take that o-ring out and use that lip as well. So That's how you disassemble. So we're at, at exactly the halfway mark The next challenge I've got is I've got to clean out all of this rust that is down in here uh, And get that super clean get all of the impurities and whatnot out this is the debris shield. I'm going to get that thing wire wheeled and uh, 
spit shine it up a little bit. Same thing with this edge here. Get everything super clean, ready to go back together. I guess at that point, we'll be halfway. So here's the before. And after a quick ride on the wire wheel. Get all those contaminants and the rust off of it. Couldn't get down in the lip very well, but cleaned up around the edges so that it'll uh, take the sealant that I'll use. Now we're halfway. Got this all cleaned up. Uh, there was some pretty nasty corrosion and rust build up down inside there. I just used uh, like a little Dremel handheld with a little wire wheel on it. I got out a couple different flavors just in case, but I really only used the one. Uh, this bogs down a little bit when you start to push too hard. Just go very lightly and let that thing do its thing. This took less than five minutes to clean up this whole piece. I also cleaned up around the mating surface, got all of the old gasket maker off. Uh, we're gonna use a, a gasket maker again and seal this up real good. I'm also going to use some sealant around the bearing that'll get up in this side up in here. So that'll just be an extra protect, protection against corrosion. Uh, we're here in Utah. In God we trust. We have salt on our roads, so if you're in the salt belt, that sort of thing, take extra precautions, keep that crap out of components that need lubrication. So I gotta get this pressed down inside there. I doubt it's just gonna drop in place. Yep, definitely not. It's got a long ways to go. So I gotta get that pressed down in there. You don't wanna bang on that with a hammer. Uh, you gotta be clear out to the outside edge. That's why I got one of those. I took a, a minute off camera to kinda scope out how this is gonna go together. I thought about pressing this into the actual housing first, but realized that that's not gonna work for what I've got. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this on because I have this ring that is exactly the same size as that inner race. So that's gonna go on there like that. And then this will go on here. And that's what I'll press against. Uh, and then I'll just make sure that I'm not up against the actual uh, electrical spinny part. I believe that's, I don't know what that's called transmitter transducer i have no no idea who cares we're not going to bump up against that that has a bearing as well it's a solid piece on this outer lip so the outer lip i'm going to put you know kind of on the lip of my little doohickey thingies and then we'll press down on the top of that so the pressure will be here on the inner race of the bearing sliding that sleeve down and seating it and putting pressure against the actual case, the out, outer housing of whatever the heck that thing's called. That's the plan. There's the press. Let's do it. All right, I've got it all set up in the press, ready to roll. Tighten the press down and start cranking. One minor adjustment, just so we're centered. And here we go. I want to make sure one thing. I want to make sure this ring, ooh, yep, see that will not fit over the top of that. So I'm going to have to do something a little different. This isn't wide enough to go around the actual hub of that. So I think I can go a little farther without causing myself too much grief. So I'm going to do that. Tight though. It's loosey goosey. Oh boy, now I got it stuck. 
Okay, so we're gonna do something slightly different. Well, that took all of two seconds to figure out. All I did is flipped it over and set it so that the edge of my dilly whacker thingies are just on the lip of that inside edge. It's on enough that there's a lip right there so I can tell when it's in the right spot. So you just kind of shimmy that around until it locks in place. Now I'll just find a new piece to put in here to press against. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Just gonna fill up some of that space on the crank. So many hours on this thing. Who has 10 seconds, am I right? should be seated. Woo! That was a cool sound. That should have done it. Let's go to the workbench and check it out. Alright, let's flip this thing over. The thing for being aluminum. It's pretty heavy. Alright, so there's the bearing pressed on. Looking good, looking solid, looking pretty much like it looked with the old one except it's not corroded and doesn't make a sound. That, my friend, is a good thing. This will go on after we press this in there. We gotta get this thing aligned just right. Um, oh yeah, and there's an O-ring that goes on down into there. I'll get that thing put on. I'm just using these uh, ring pliers. If you don't have a set of these, there's a link in the description down below. I'll leave a link to all the tools that I use in this uh, video as well. Buy yourself some tools. Save yourself some money, learn a new skill. That's what my channel is all about. Let me get that O-ring on there. O-ring, snap ring on there, uh, and then we'll get this thing aligned. I'll find my sealant that's in one of my drawers over here and get ready to put this thing all back together. Make sure that this still has, yeah, this is the one that's marked to go into the electrical connection. Aha, here it is. All right, there's the one that's marked. There's a little sleeve that goes inside the alignment for the pins. All set, ready to go back together. Let's do this. Today's sealant of choice is Permatex Ultra Black Gasket Maker. It is oil resistant. I'm using this for a very specific reason, and it's because it's what I had in my drawer over there. I've had good luck with this stuff used it in several applications so you take this and just throw it yep like that and let's make a mess mmm yummy alright so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some on my finger and then I'm gonna put it in this lip down here and just kinda make myself a ridge at that lip so that when this presses on uh, some will get behind it but most of it will stay on this outer edge um, to create a seal. A little water barrier. See if we can keep this from happening again. This stuff does set up pretty fast, so you do have to kind of move a little. It takes a good 24 hours before it's, well it takes several hours I should say, before it's ready for any type of an oil pressure. So if you're using it for your oil pan or anything like that, uh, just give it a little bit of time. I'm gonna put this thing together and then wait till tomorrow because it's starting to get a little late anyway um, before I actually put it in the car and expose it to gear oil. So that's my working plan at the moment. All right, one more finger full, we'll be in business. So down inside there, there's some sealant down covering that lip that's at the bottom. Now we want to take this right there. All right, so I'm going to go back to the press. I'm going to do this off camera, but uh, basically I'm just going to press those together. So one quick thing while I get ready to press this in, you got to make sure that that little tab goes around that little knobby. That aligns that thing and keeps it from spinning. And then your electrical will go down through one of those holes. But you can worry about that piece later. This just has to be held just right while you press it down. Got to get to pressing. It's getting dry. And this is what the pressed piece looks like. You can actually see some of the sealant that kind of squirted out as I pressed that down in. 
I'm just going to leave that right where it is and not even mess with it. It's not affecting the bearing in any way, shape, or form. Now, this I'll press back down on there again, and that will seal it up nicely. And then we'll wait till tomorrow night after I get off work to put the thing back in the van. Thank you, press. Thank you, toolkit. Let's get this last piece together, and then we'll be ready for tomorrow. It is the very next day. Uh, I got this out last night because I got a comment from a, another viewer on our 79 Ford. Uh, it's an F-250 sitting underneath that cover right there. So if you're into that sort of thing, be sure and subscribe, like, do all those things. That we call Midnight Maroon. So lots of videos coming on that still. Got a long ways to go on it. Uh, I took some time just a second ago to get this thing all dialed back in, put together. So it's ready to go. This uh, solidified up nice, so that's going to be a nice watertight seal and salt, salt type seal, salt tight seal. AIM all purpose uh, lubricant, link down below to that. That stuff's amazing, especially for rusty bolts. Uh, anything that should move needs that. Anything that squeaks needs that, if it's not supposed to squeak, that is. Anyway, this thing is all put back together and ready to rock and roll. Uh, I do need to go to the store and get. Uh, what do I need? I need gear oil because I got to top off the differential with what leaked out. But putting it back in is the exact reverse of what we just did to take it out. It sits in there like this. This is up top. There's your little vent tube that'll connect four bolts. Reattach the drive line. I'm going to get it all put back together. It's really hard to get underneath the van and use the camera. So you don't get to come with me this time. But I'll get it all put back in. I'll do an after video of uh, the sound that hopefully this thing is not making and compare it to this old bearing right here. So that's what we'll do and then we'll uh, reconvene here in a minute and then we'll go over all the tools that you need to pull this off. So stay tuned. Chapter links down below to skip around and do all the things to get you to where you need to if you're doing this job yourself. I'll leave links down below to the bearing, uh, basically all the tools that you're going to need for this job, and then you can reference this video. So save this in your playlist and refer back to it as needed. Appreciate it, and we'll check back when we get this thing installed. Real quick though, one thing I forgot to mention is the mating surface for this that's still on the front of the differential. You're going to have to clean that off uh, and just make sure it's uh, dirt free get any of the clumps of other sealant that's on it off if there is any and then just make sure it's clean and dry and then we're going to use just a little bead of uh, that sealant around this when we mate the two back together. I'm going to use do the bead on the actual front of the differential though basically so that I don't have to worry about going around these type things so just use the flattest surface when you're doing something like that to actually make your bead of caulking on. And then you should be good to go. It'll be sealed up nicely and ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna get this thing slammed back in. We'll uh, do a sound check and then a test drive. All right, so let's talk the tools that you're gonna need for this job. You're gonna need a 12 and a 14 millimeter box end wrench and sockets. I also cheated and used air tools. Uh, you don't have to have air tools, but it's definitely gonna make your life a little bit easier. At a minimum, you're gonna want a an impact, like it doesn't have to be air. It could be an impact battery, but you're gonna want that. Several different extensions to reach back in there. Uh, the gun itself doesn't fit up tight enough with just the socket on it. So you have to get a little bit creative to reach up in there and get those things out, but it's possible. Uh, I used a big breaker bar for a portion of it too, just cause that was until I figured out the socket 
and the extension, but I used a breaker bar as well. You're going to need a ring remover tool, and this one either clamps in or you turn the little dial and it spreads apart so that you can do both with this one. You're going to need a pick set. Don't have to have all of them, but I just It'll come in a kit, you'll have whatever. Standard screwdriver, I used a Dremel tool. That's not absolutely required, but it made cleaning up the part and removing that last little bit of rust and the other like gasket maker seal, silicone, whatever, it made removing that super easy. So I do suggest that. You're also gonna need a press kit in various sizes. You're gonna need to get up to a four inch uh, if you can find one that will also make your life that much easier. You could do it without this if you have a welder and get super creative, but with this makes it that much easier. You're going to want one of those. Several jack stands. You don't have to take the rear wheels off. I did just so that I could get more light under there so I could see what I'm doing without pulling a light. You're going to need an oil catch can as well. And really that's about all I used for this project. And maybe a light some sort of a light source to be able to see down in there. It's not that bad. Here's the part. This is the only part that I purchased for this job. It's a 90363-95007. And this is a Toyota genuine part. This is a common enough problem. Toyota is basically saying that nobody else can make this bearing but them. It's a little bit pricey. It's like 88 bucks or something, but it was a direct fit. Fit right in there, no big deal. Now. Let's turn that thing on and see what it sounds like. Nailed it. That is a wrap. This job is done. I'm going to call my niece, tell her to come get it. I am going to take it for a spin real quick. We're going to go 90 kilometers per hour and just verify that everything's good. I have no doubt that it will be. Got to put the tires back on and take her for a spin. Stay safe out there, my friends. This is Troy, Troy's Garage, and we'll see you guys very soon. All right, first drive. The TPS light's on, it was not before. And right there's 90 kilometers per hour. And the rear drivetrain, quiet as can be. This problem is solved.